Roman, I've been struggling to get things done. I've been procrastinating and I don't know what's wrong with me. Or what is the secret to motivation? How can we become motivated to do the things in life uh, that we truly find important that we want to do? Some of us are struggling to get motivation to go to the gym, to just do our work. Uh, we may be remote workers and we just have work that we need to get done, but we mo we don't feel motivated to get the work done, to do paperwork, pay bills, do whatever. We're just not motivated to, to do the work. And we find ourselves procrastinating, which means that we're putting off the things that we know we should do. Uh, these are tasks. These are projects. Many of these are things that we have to get done because there's going to be a consequence if we don't. Some of these things are our legacy work. This is what we would be proud to say we did it if we got it done, but we can't ever seem to get it done. It's the blog we've always wanted to start, the YouTube channel we've always wanted to get going, the book we've always wanted to write. Uh, we have goals, we have dreams, right? But, but we seem to procrastinate in, in, in reaching out and getting those things done. And it's like, when there's a deadline and there's a direct consequence, it's like, then maybe we can get motivated. But when there's not a deadline and there's no direct consequence, it's like we can't get motivated. Or if the deadline is just far off, so we know that we're going to need to be getting that done at a certain time, but it's not for several weeks, then we wait the whole several weeks before we actually start to do it. And that is the frustration of procrastination. One gentleman said, I have lost years and years of my life due to procrastination. I am 51 years old now, and unfortunately, I haven't yet overcome it. I'm praying for a breakthrough. Well, tonight could be the breakthrough you're praying for, because I'm going to break down for you the understanding of how to get over procrastination and how to actually find the motivation to move forward and to do what it is you want to do. There's, of course, a direct correlation between your trauma and your tendency to procrastinate now. And I'm going to help you to understand that correlation. You see, when we are people who are anxious, the anxiety makes it difficult because we have all this fear around the, the task that is we have to accomplish. The anxiety makes it difficult to get the thing done. But because the thing's not done, we have more anxiety, right? So, so we're in this loop. We're always feeling anxious because we want to get this thing done, but we don't get the things done. So, so we got more anxiety. And then we're just like fatigued of, of the pain that we're experiencing. So then what do you do? You just go to bed or you just veg out and you just watch television and you find yourself scrolling through Netflix or sleeping all day, but you can't even enjoy that. Why? Well, because you feel guilty because you know you have things that you should be doing and you could be doing more, but you're not doing it. You're not living up to your potential. So now you feel bad for the fact that you're taking time to relax and taking a break. It's no secret that procrastinators are terrible at relaxing, which is ironic because that's all we do, right? That's that's what we say. We, we, we say we're lazy, right? We say, oh, I'm a procrastinator because I'm lazy. I don't ever get anything done. I'm so lazy. But if we're so lazy, that one thing we would be good at getting done is relaxing. But we don't even feel we're good at that. So what is the deal with procrastination? Well, well, that's false. The idea that you're lazy and that's the reason you procrastinate is a false idea. It's not that you're lazy. It's much deeper than that, much more complicated. If that were just the problem, then we would just separate off all the lazy people and toss them out, right? But but it's not so simple. It's not that you're lazy. In fact, uh, when, the, when the going gets tough, you're actually a very hard worker. Uh, so the problem with procrastination is actually the opposite. It's not that you're lazy. It's that you are a perfectionist. And that needs to be addressed. Especially when we're a trauma survivor, we can give in to extreme thinking. And any this can happen to anyone, absolutely anyone. So when you when you look at your tasks, the things that you need to get done, Part of the reason it's so difficult to get them done 
is because in your mind, you have a concept of this project and what you would like to accomplish that is too big. It's too grandiose because you're a perfectionist. You think it's not worth doing if you can't get it done right. And so you don't want to start it at all because you got to do it right. And to do it right, that if, if you think about it, that could really take hours. It could take days. You're going to have to be hyper-focused in on your task on your computer. You're going to have to be working or scrubbing and just be so diligent at it. You're going to have to be doing everything in your power to make it happen. And as a result, maybe you'll just do it tomorrow because I don't feel like working that hard right now and you don't either. And so we pull out the phone and we start scrolling through TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. And the next thing you know, hours have gone by. And then what do we do? Oh, I hate myself. I can't believe I still haven't started this task. And we're stuck in this loop. We beat ourselves up for not working hard enough. But we don't want to work hard enough because our idea is that we have to work harder than we actually have to work. What holds you back, what keeps you from moving forward is often perfectionism. So we have to address the perfectionism. We have to address the perfectionism in order to be able to get some things done. Let's do that together right now. Let's address your perfectionism. Okay. Is it balanced thinking to believe that you can make something perfect? The answer is no. Does perfection exist amongst humans and the work of humans? The answer is no. Perfection doesn't ex exist in the world of humans. And you are a human, not a god. So you will not be getting anything done to perfection. So the first thing you got to do is let that go. You got to let go of perfectionism. How do we do that? Well, change that belief right away. The, the original belief that you had that if you're going to do anything, you're going to have to do it right, i.e. to your mother's standards, i.e. perfect. We have to let that go and replace it with a new way of thinking. And we're going to do that right now. What is a new, more healthy way of approaching things in life that we have to do? Give it your all, give it 100%? No. Because if you give something 100%, you won't have any other energy left for anything else. So you actually can't give something 100%, even though we use that term, right? If you actually gave something everything, you would have nothing left. So, so there has to be a more, a more balanced approach, a more balanced approach at, at our tasks. What's a more balanced approach? Instead of, I have to get this done to perfectionism, to the highest standards, this has to be the best report ever, this has got to blow everyone away, what's, what's a more realistic way of looking at it? Well, I present to you the rule of 85% i.e. being an imperfectionist. That's your new goal. You want to be an imperfectionist. This is an art. This is a skill. To be an imperfectionist means that you will approach everything that you do not to the best of your ability. You will only give it 85%. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Is that right? Only doing, that sounds horrible. Well, we may have been brainwashed through our entire life to believe that, that we'd be an awful person to not give our absolute all in everything that we do. Uh, but the reality is we don't need to be a perfect parent. We just need to be a good enough parent. We don't need to be a perfect employee. We just need to be a good enough employee. We don't need to be a perfect counselor. We don't need to be a perfect scientist. We don't need to be a perfect doctor. We just need people who are good enough at the things that they're doing. And you don't need to perfectly clean your kitchen or your bathroom. You just need to improve it. This is balanced thinking. 
So when you approach things at the 85 percentile, now you're working in the world the way the world actually exists. So you can work in harmony with the universe. You see, if you were to rake your leaves and you had the mindset that you needed to get 100% of the leaves off of the lawn, and I had the mindset that I only needed to get 85% of the leaves off the lawn, when I rake one time, that's going to pick up 85% of the leaves. And then I've got the rest of the evening to myself because I only have to rake my yard one time. When you rake your yard one time, it's only going to pick up 85% of the leaves. And since you're a 100 percentile person, then you're going to think, well, I can't leave the other 15% of the leaves here on the lawn. So how many times are you going to have to rake your lawn to get 100% of the leaves? Well, you have to completely rake your lawn again in an attempt to get up 100% of the leaves. But the reality is you only get 85% of those leaves, right? So you're going to have to rake your lawn again. It's going to take you like three passes, maybe worse, trying to get 100% of the leaves. And you're going to be so frustrated trying to pack these leaves into the bags or keep them in the piles. And the wind's going to be blowing and the leaves are going to go back on the lawn and more leaves are going to fall from the trees because perfection doesn't exist. And you are wasting your time. And the next time we have to go out to rake leaves, you're not even going to leave your couch. You can't get it done now because you tried it and it took everything you had. It was too much because your mindset was not calibrated to the way the universe really works. You weren't an imperfectionist. You were being a perfectionist. So therefore, even something simple like raking your front lawn, whereas it would only take me an hour. It's going to take you all day. So let's embrace imperfectionism. The rule of 85% is I'm going to do everything to about 85% effort. That's what I tell myself before I do anything. I'll give it 85%. I'm not going to try my best on it. I am not going to try my best. This allows the task to already be less daunting and more approachable. Again. I decide, and I am not going to give my all to the dishes in the sink. I'm only going to give about 85%. Now it's less daunting. I don't have to clean the kitchen perfectly to my mother's standards. I'm only going to give it 85%. Now it's less daunting. And it's also less frustrating when people are using the bathroom that you just cleaned or using the kitchen that you just cleaned because you only just improved it. It wasn't that you tried to get it perfect because perfection doesn't exist. It's not possible for humans to create perfection. Let go of perfectionism. All of a sudden, procrastination starts clearing up on its own. Is it that simple? For many of us, it is. Some of us have beliefs that are holding us back. When you change the beliefs and the way of thinking, then you can move forward. If you change the beliefs in the way of thinking, then you can move forward. So some of us are in a mindset, for instance, of fear. Your entire life, you've just been motivated by fear. And that's why it's hard to now pick up the legacy projects, to live in your purpose, to be getting cool things done, like the TikTok channel you've been wanting to get done, or starting a community youth group, or starting a book club. You've always wanted to do these things, but you don't do them because fear has been your motivator your whole life, not dreams. And so you don't have any practice achieving any dreams. Fear was weaponized in your household by your parents to, to motivate you and to control you. Well, you don't want this to happen. So you're living in a constant state of fear of the consequences. And fear is used by the authorities in school. Fear is used by the authorities in our workplace and in the law and the government. Fear, because fear is a powerful motivator. So that's why people use it against you. That's why people try to use it to control you. But what happens with some of us is that we fear even taking on the task that we're procrastinating about. And that fear 
of even doing the task because we think the task is going to be so difficult or we think we're going to do something wrong or we're going to make a mistake or or there's going to be a consequence that makes us not even want to start. So how do we address the fear if we're in fear mindset? Simple. Feel the fear, but do it anyway. That's how we handle fear. Fear was never designed to be your boss. Fear is a gift that is there to be a protection for us. It's the friend that says, hey, maybe you don't want to go jumping off that cliff. Maybe you don't want to drive your car so recklessly. It protects us. Fear is not meant to prevent us from achieving our dreams from doing good in the world and helping others, from giving ourselves a life that that we would truly be happy living. So don't allow fear to stop you right now. Don't allow fear to motivate you or to be the main catalyst to anything in your life. Allow fear to be a friend, or as I say, a bodyguard that works for you. It's your security detail. Yes, it can keep you safe, but it is not your boss. So you can listen to it, but not obey it. So although the fear is speaking to you and it's telling you, oh, no, if you try to get your taxes done, you're going to make a mistake and you're going to do something wrong. Uh Uh-uh. If you try to submit that, that report, feel the fear, but do it anyway. A good way to handle it is just like you would handle an actual subordinate who comes to you with a concern. You're not going to stop and change the whole company because they've had a concern, but you would listen to them. You would make them feel listened to. You might say, go ahead, Doug, tell me what's on your mind. And Doug gives you his complaints and you would write them down. Say, thank you, Doug. Thank you so much for, for telling me about that. Is there anything else? And Doug gives you his complaints and you write them down. And then you dismiss Doug and you look at the complaints and then you decide as the CEO of your company what action you will take and if you will take his actions into consideration in that circumstance. That's how you have to deal with the fear. Listen to the fear and say, okay, fear, what's the problem? What is your concern? And write it down. But then you're going to make the decision. So you dismiss the fear out of the room While you decide what you will do, you can feel the fear, but then you need to do it anyway. Don't allow the fear to actually make the decisions that that's not logical or beneficial. Some of us have a mindset of low self-esteem. So we just kind of feel like Aaron felt. Aaron said, procrastination leads me to feel like a loser, a failure, and trapped. So basically, it reiterates and promotes my self-identity. Did you catch that? Aaron said that procrastinating makes him feel like a loser. It makes him feel like a failure. It makes him feel trapped. So it's just reinforcing his own self-identity because that's the way he feels about himself anyway. And that's the semi-psychological reason why many of us are procrastinating. Because we are living out our own perception of ourselves. So if you're going through life, believing that you're a loser and a failure and trapped and you can't, and it's not possible and you're not able and you're not good enough and you're not worthy, then you live a life like that in your actions. So congratulations in your success of being exactly what you've always wanted to be. But if you desire more, then you need to change your perception of yourself. You need to change your beliefs about yourself and your way of thinking. So when we go in, we change that I'm a loser to I'm a winner. I believe I'm a winner. Why? Is it because is it because we think that that's the only truth? No, it's because it's a beneficial belief. It's a beneficial belief. So we choose it. I choose to believe I'm a winner because that works for me. To believe I'm a loser doesn't work. So it doesn't matter if I lost 35 times and I've only won twice. I believe I'm a winner because I only I won, I won I won two times. So therefore I'm a winner. So I choose that belief 
And by taking that belief on and accepting that and embedding that into my subconscious, now I start to live the life of a winner because I believe I am a winner. How do you choose a belief? How do you make yourself believe something? I can't make myself believe something, can I? Well, of course you can. Our beliefs are based on evidence. You must simply decide what you would like to believe and then examine the evidence that supports that belief. When you find a belief that is detrimental, that is not helping you, then you must look at all the evidence against that belief and defeat it and throw it in the trash because it's not helping you. When should you do this? Like right now, like at the end of this talk, as soon as this is over, you should have a little list of, of self-defeatist, detrimental beliefs that you are going to defeat. And then you got to go in and defeat those tasks, those beliefs. And so if you believe you're a failure, well, you're going to live the life of failure. But if you choose instead to believe, I am successful, then what do you do? You start to look for the evidence that supports that belief. Well, there was that one time in third grade, I got an A on my paper. So I guess I am a successful person. And then you find more evidence. Well, actually, there was even more recent times I was successful driving my car from my house to my store. So I guess I am a successful person. And we start believing that you're a successful person. You start to manifest that in reality. And the universe starts to bend a little bit to that. And it starts to lend itself to that. And you start to live out that existence. And all of a sudden, you're not procrastinating anymore because you're not trying to self-fulfill a detrimental prophecy. You're not going to self-sabotage. Because if you believe you are a success, then of course you're going to go get your work done because you're successful. And that's what a successful person does. And so instead of believing that you're trapped, you're going to believe that you're free. And instead of telling yourself, I have to do this, I have to do that, and accepting other people telling you what you have to do, you will say, thank you. No, but I want to do this. This is my desire to do this. Not I have to, because if I don't, I'm going to lose my job. Oh, that's helplessness, trapped mindset. Don't talk like that to yourself. No, you go, I want to do that. I choose to do that uh, because examining the consequences in this particular situation, I don't prefer to face the consequences. That It's all personal power. See how I'm talking? I don't prefer to face the consequences that would come subsequently of, and why, why am I, why am I, verbally doing all these gymnastics around what i'm trying to get around is helplessness mindset this this whole mindset of i have to like i'm a slave no no, no i cannot allow myself to think that way not unless it's something really beneficial to me like i have to get to the gym today then i'm going to use that because it's beneficial so i chose that belief i have to get to the gym today i can't not get to the gym you see how I'm using it? The, the verbiage matters and how you're speaking to your subconscious, because that's what's going to reflect back at you. Hope that's making sense to you. So it's, so it's not I, I feel trapped. It's I feel free. I'm doing what I want to be doing. And I'm going to move forward. I'm going to get this work done because that's what I want to do. So now when we're going against that low self-esteem. We also have to address a lack of self-compassion. Some people procrastinate because they have a mindset of low self-love or no self-love. You'll know this is the case with you if when you think about it, you would be willing to do it for someone else, but you wouldn't be willing to do it for yourself. That's a lack of self-love, lack of self-compassion. So if my mom, my aunt, my sister, my brother, my children called me and they said, hey, could you run out to the store, get me some milk, go to the post office, uh, fulfill my prescription for medications. You're, you'd be, yeah, I'm on my way. You're already getting dressed and you're gone. But then if you need to do it for you, you're just like, mm, who cares? Uh, I'll just allow myself to die here. That is a lack of self-compassion, a lack of self-love. So we need to improve upon that. So go down to the very matrix of love, which is the mind, and understand what love really is. Love is a powerful energy force that is cultivated through focusing on the positive attributes of said targets. 
Love is cultivated, cultivated by focusing on the positive attributes of the target. Love is a choice. It is not a feeling. It is a choice. You can choose to love or not to love something or someone. So you need to now choose to love the self. Because at the very inception, at the very core of love, you are supposed to love other people, your neighbor, as you love yourself. So it is not, I love me more than everyone. It is not, I love everyone else more than me. Those are both imbalanced. It's, I love everyone equally, including me, because you are a part of everyone. You're a part of the human family. So you have to love yourself the same level that you love other people. So if you would cook for them and clean for them and run errands for them, you got to do that for you too. Otherwise, you're not truly loving yourself. And that is a sin. It is not, it is not spiritual or acceptable for you to not love yourself. So you have to learn to care for the self, to have compassion for the self, to forgive the self to coddle the self, to soothe the self, to provide for the self, to nurture the self. And it will take some practice, but start in the belief system. I choose to love me. I am important. The last part of our belief system that could be flawed is the whole concept of identity could be wrapped up in, in our tasks, the things that we want to do. So it's like, I can't just go and start my YouTube channel because my whole identity is wrapped up in it or how well I do on this report for work or, or to turn in this work. It's everything I am. That's who I am. And again, we are in perfectionist mindset with that, where we think our whole identity is wrapped up in what we do. So we're human doings instead of human beings. So let us embrace the simple fact that our importance doesn't come from what we do. Our importance doesn't come from other people's opinions. Our importance is intrinsic. We were born with it. We were in our mother's womb with our importance. We've been important. We have been important. And so what we do is just a manifestation of that importance. It is not the importance itself. Try to grasp that. What you do is just showing the appreciation for what you are and who you are, what, what you have. It in itself is not who you are. You're so much more than your accomplishments and other people's opinions of you. So, of course, we have dopamine. So we're wanting to chase the rewards. So there's other things that kind of prevent us from doing what we would want to do because they feel good, like scrolling through TikTok or watching television. It feels good to do that. And it's okay to admit that sometimes we just want to relax. But in order to be able to enjoy relaxing, we need to make sure that we're able to be in the moment and say, this is okay for me to relax because I am a successful person. I am a good person. I am not a lazy person and I can get things done and I do get things done. So when you're relaxing, relax fully. And when you're working, pour yourself into your work. The secret to motivation is momentum. Nobody understands this. But intrinsically, when you start applying it in your life, you will find yourself being motivated. And so we think maybe if I listen to a tape or something, I'll get motivated. What it is, is that we run on momentum. As human beings, we run on momentum. So you are motivated to do what you are already doing. Think about it. When you go to the gym and you see the people in the gym, why is it that 80% of the people in the gym look like they live in the gym? Why do they look so good? It's because 80% of the people in the gym do live in the gym. They are motivated to keep going to the gym. Why? Because that's what they do. They're motivated to do what they're already doing. So when you get a routine of going to the gym, suddenly it becomes easier to go to the gym. The reason we're not motivated to go to the gym is because we haven't been going. 
We don't go because we're not motivated, but you're not motivated because you don't go. Nobody feels like cooking if they're not cooking or cleaning if they're not cleaning. But if you start to clean a little bit, once that hand starts moving, the motivation washes over you and you get engrossed in the project. So if you want to feel motivated, trick your brain by telling yourself that you're only going to do a little bit. This is the tool of breaking things down into small bits. So if I tell myself, I look at the big pile of dishes, I tell myself, I got to get these things done to perfection. Okay, perfectionism, that's not going to work. If I say you're stupid and I beat myself up for having the dishes, that's not going to work either. So what's going to motivate me to do the dishes? I tell myself, let me just wash one cup. Just going to wash my favorite cup. That's it. I'm not going to do any more. Just going to wash my favorite cup. So I roll up my sleeves. And I get my sponge all soapy. I get the water warm. And I take the one cup. Start washing. And what's going to happen when I finish that cup? My hands are there. They're in the water. What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to look at the other dishes and say, well, I'm right here. So, so let me go ahead and just get a couple more of these glasses here. And I'm going to keep washing. And the next thing you know, I'm going to be able to get about 85% of those dishes done. Why? Because the motivation came from the momentum. And I built momentum by taking it into really small steps. So instead of saying, I want to get the fitness body of my life, take the perfectionism, set it aside. You would like to go to the gym? How can you motivate yourself to go to the gym? Break it down into the smallest base steps where you got to put your clothes on and you got to get in the car and you got to go there, find the parking spot. So instead of telling yourself that you got to do all that, you got to wake up in the morning, don't do that. Just say, all I'm going to do is just brush my teeth, put on the gym shorts. That's it. I'm not going, just going to brush my teeth, put on the shorts. And then what happens? Once you got the gym shorts on, you're like, you know, where is my polyester gym shirt? I really like that thing. You, and then once you get the shirt on, then you're going to put the socks and the shoes on. You're going to be like, I'm already dressed for the gym, so I might as well go. But I'm not going to work out. I'm just going to go to the gym. I'm going to take a lap around and touch a couple machines, and I'm out. This is how you trick yourself. So then you go to the gym with the intention of not working out. But what will happen when you get there, you're in the environment, and you hear the music, and you hear the clinking, and you see an open machine? Well, now it's a lot easier to work out. All of a sudden, you've got motivation. Where did you get the motivation to work, for, to work out? Well, it's because you're standing in the gym in your gym clothes. The motivation comes from momentum. Momentum is the secret to motivation. That's how you get it. So break it down into small bits. Break everything you want to do into small bits. And then you will find yourself actually accomplishing the things you want to do. Even if I don't want to take out my garbage, I just say, all I'm going to do is just ball this bag up. All I'm going to do is just tie the bag and pull it out, right? It's the steps, the little steps that are easier to take on. And once you start going, it becomes easier to keep going. So you feel like you have what you need now in order to overcome procrastination? Harness the power of now. Take the action, not later, but now. If you cannot do the action right now, then, to, then right now what you can do is put it on your to-do list. So put it on your list. Take some action right now. Everything you do in life, lay one brick towards your purpose every single day. Something small. Because everything you do in life is built up of a lot of small components to create the bigger step, the bigger creation. A wall is made up of bricks and a house is made up of walls. So each day, lay one small brick towards your purpose, something small. Register your domain name, start building your website, something very tiny. Go and buy highlighters, get a marker board, something so small. But every day you got to do something. When I say every day, I'm not using hyperbole. Work towards your purpose seven days a week. You don't need a day off from your purpose because you're just doing small things every day towards it. Small, something, a phone call, 
a little research on it, something towards your purpose every day. Don't go to bed until you've done something towards your purpose. And right before you drift off to sleep, conjure to your mind a beautiful vision of the future. Picture yourself there, what you're wearing, the clothes blowing in the wind, you having your dream job or your dream car or your dream life, wherever it is, whatever it is. Get that beautiful visualization of the future. And you feed yourself that image every night. And your subconscious mind will work for you to help bring that visualization of the future to reality.